Good morning, Bella Vista family and friends. Here are your announcements for the week. Would you like help and encouragement after the death of a loved one? The Grief Share is a special weekly seminar and support group to help you rebuild your life. Join us this Thursday, April 22nd at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. For more information, please contact Dr. Queen Martin at 281-924-1213. This is a reminder, the audiovisual team will be having a second training on Thursday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. during choir rehearsal. This will be in preparation for the re-entry on May 16th. Don't forget to join us on Tuesday mornings at 7.14 a.m. for the Bella Vista prayer call. Grab your friends and join us in the social sanctuary for worship on Wednesdays. Services begin at 7 p.m. and are streamed via Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget to tune in weekly to the Care Academy Traditional Vanguard course posted weekly on the church website. If you have announcements to share, Please be aware the deadline is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. You can email your announcement to announcements at bellavistanbc.org or kpriester at bellavistanbc.org. Stay safe, family. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and don't forget to social distance. And as always, everyone, have a great week. Don't forget to social distance. And as always, everyone, have a great week. Put those hands together this morning and tell God thank you. For the rest of our lives, we will serve him. We're elated, we're grateful, we're excited to serve the Lord this morning. Somebody said, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. He's a mighty good God, and it's a mighty good day. The song says, all of my life, I've never known the Lord to fail. He remains the same. Guess what? Wonderful is his name. Come on. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same. Wonderful is your name. Woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put food on my table, brought joy to my day. I thank your love and never change, and wonderful, and wonderful, and wonderful, wonderful is your name. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same. Wonderful is your name. You woke me up this morning, started me on my way. Put food on my table, brought joy to my day. If God has been good to you, why don't you praise Him right where you are? The song says, for the rest of my life, I'll serve Him. Let's sing it, y'all. For the rest of my life. Come on, let's go. For the rest of my life, I'll serve Him. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life, I serve Him. For the rest of my life, you woke me up this morning, started me on my way, put food on my table, brought joy to my day. Wonderful, 
Hallelujah. Wonderful is his name. Good morning, Bella Vista. Once again, today is the day that the Lord has made, and the word of the Lord says we shall rejoice and be glad in it. And so we are grateful today for another opportunity to uh, come to the virtual house of worship uh, to worship and honor our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this day. Uh, we want to just uh, thank you for joining us today, and we pray that you will be encouraged uh, by the word that the Lord will speak through me uh, today to the people of Bella Vista. Uh, as you know, we can uh, watch uh, this uh, service via many mediums, uh, so we want to ask you to share with your friends and your family to join us on Facebook or on YouTube and to hit the like or subscribe button uh, if they uh, join on any one of those uh, video mediums on today. And so again, we're grateful for an opportunity to be here to uh, worship the Lord and join one another uh, in corporate prayer. And that's what we'll do right now. Uh, we will join uh, one another in corporate prayer on this morning. Uh, many of you have prayer requests that are on your hearts and minds on this morning, and there are names scrolling uh, on the screen before you today. So pick one of those names and uh, tuck it away in your heart. And uh, as I pray today for this church and for this country and this community, uh, pray for that person whose name you have picked out uh, uh, scrolling on our screen today. We want to especially uh, lift up our brother Woodrow Thomas today. Uh, he had a successful surgery on Thursday, last Thursday. Uh, he is doing well. His spirits are up. And so we want to continue to pray that uh, the Lord will continue to heal him uh, and keep him during this healing process on his recovery. So let's look to the Lord. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we do come to say thank you, Lord. Uh, we, 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 we come and lift up uh, all these names that are scrolling on the screen uh, this morning, Father. Uh, you already knew about each and every one of them, Lord, but we ask that you would uh, hear our petitions for them, Father. Uh, go by and visit those who are sick. Go by and comfort those who need comforting, Father. Go by and visit those who uh, just need someone to talk to today, Father. Uh, we ask that you would do that uh, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Uh, we lift up our dear brother Woodrow Thomas to you today, Lord. His dear wife, Sheila Thomas, and his children today uh, continue to be with him in his healing process, Lord continue to be with him in these weeks and months of recovery that will come, Father, uh, that he might be able to come back into this house of worship and give us a report of the good thing that the Lord had done for him. Now, Father, there are many other names that uh, we could be calling today. We want to lift up this country today, Father. Uh, there's so much going on in our world today, Lord. Uh, just this past week, another mass shooting, Father. Uh, this world needs you, Lord. Your word needs to go out, Lord. People need to know that there is a Savior, uh, that they have another way out uh, besides the route that they have taken, Father. And so we pray for each person uh, in this country, Lord, each person in this world, Lord, who is just under so much pressure, Lord, that it takes them to the, the places that the normally people wouldn't go. And so, Father, we pray for all those families, uh, who have lost loved ones, not only in, at the FedEx in Indiana, but the shooting in uh, Colorado a few weeks back, Lord, even in Bryan, Texas, in our own backyard, Lord. They need you today. And so, Father, we ask that you would go by and visit those families and keep them and comfort them as well. Remember our pastor today, Lord, Pastor Davis. Uh, continue to be with him, Lord. Uh, continue to uh, strengthen him, Father. Uh, he has a lot on his plate, as he has mentioned, Lord, and we ask that you would, would, would just comfort him and keep him, Lord. Uh, lead and guide him, Lord, uh, in, in the processes and the things that he has to do uh, in the name of Jesus. Pray for his, his father today, Brother James Davis. We pray for his wife today, Lord, for his children uh, today, Father, for his grandmother today, Lord, uh, still dealing with the loss of her husband, Father. And we know that you are able. Uh, we know that you, that you can, Father. And, and even today, Father, I lift up 
uh, my own petitions to you, Father. I lift up my granddaughter to you today, Lord, who is uh, being a victim of bullying in school, Lord. But I know that you are able uh, to put an angel by her side to be her security detail and that you will, will keep her safe uh, uh, as she goes to school, Lord. And remember all the other kids, Lord, that face the same thing she is facing. Uh, keep them and comfort them uh, is our prayer. And we ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, brothers and sisters, it's offering time. Uh, we want to uh, ask you that you give your best gift on today. And as you know, on the bottom of the screen scrolling, there are many different ways that you can give. You can give by text, uh, you can give by email, you can give by uh, uh, mailing your contributions into the church today. So uh, we want to take this opportunity to uh, prepare our gifts and our hearts for giving. And remember all the different areas of the church that stand in need of, of giving. Well, remember our scholarship fund, remember our building fund as I'm looking out today into the sanctuary. Uh, what a beautiful job has been done on this sanctuary, and so let's remember our building fund as well as we give on today. And so as you give, prepare your hearts today. Uh, we'll, we'll pray over this offering, and then we'll move on in our service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just uh, come to say thank you today, Lord, uh, for those gifts that have been given on today. Uh, we ask that they will be used uh, for the benefit of the ongoing work of your kingdom, Lord, and that your name may be glorified and we might be blessed. And it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Give glory to God, saints. Why he is a wonderful God, he is a merciful God, he is a mighty God. And we give him glory this morning. You got something to be grateful for? Put your hands together right now. Guess what? He's a mighty healer. He's a mighty healer, saint. Hallelujah. Give glory to God. He's a mighty healer. He's a mighty healer, saint. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. He's a mighty healer, saint. He's a mighty healer, saint. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. He's a mighty healer. He's saint. a mighty healer, saint. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Guess what? He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise, saint. Give glory to God. Come on, right where you are. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. Saints. Give him the glory. Give him the Give praise. Glory to God. He's worthy of the praise, saints. He's worthy of the praise, saints. He of glory to Give God. Glory to God. He's worthy of the praise, He's saints. Give him the glory, give him the praise. Give glory to God. Now right where you are, come on, lift those hands up. Come on. Lift those hands say, Give glory. Give glory to God. Lift 
echoes have saints. Echoes have saints. Give him the glory. Give him glory. Those hands, cause he's worthy of the praise, he's worthy of the glory. Lift those hands, saints, give glory to God. Hallelujah is the highest praise. We praise him this morning, we thank him this morning. So many wonderful things about yeah, him. We tell the Father, thank you. Yes. We tell him he's worthy. Yes. And not just because of what he's done, but just because he is God. Listen, if you've got some battles in your life, start praising him. If you need some healing, start praising him. If you need some encouragement, start praising him. Whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever it is you're going through, start praising him. Somebody said a long time ago, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Claim it right now. Praise him right now. Guess what? The victory is already won. He said, I've already overcome the whole world. And guess what? So why should we fear anything? Why should we be discouraged? God is God, and guess what? He is able. Can you praise him right now? Can you tell him hallelujah right now? He's worthy to be praised. Put those hands together.
to our word from the Lord on today. And if you have your Bibles, if you would uh, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians on today, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 16 through 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, verses 16 through 18. And, and this is what the word of the Lord says uh, this morning. It says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And just for a few moments this morning, I want to talk about the subject, do not lose heart. And this morning, I'd like to begin with a question. Uh, I don't think that anyone came here this morning. Uh, looking for the choir to sing something or perhaps the preacher to pray something or even preach something that would strip you of all the hope that you have. I don't think any one of you came and joined us on Facebook or on YouTube this morning or are going to watch later on uh, looking to be uh, discouraged. Nobody came here to have any of those things happen to them. Nobody right now who is watching is saying, Preacher, strip away all of my motivation for serving the Lord. Uh, preacher, discourage me. Uh, make me feel defeated on this morning. As a matter of fact, we all came here looking for the opposite, didn't we? We came here looking for encouragement. We came here seeking hope. We came here desiring to be motivated to do greater things for the Lord and in the Lord. We came here to hear words of encouragement, uplifting words to inspire us through the word of God. Brothers and sisters, when you look out at this world, we live in a world that is filled with so much hopelessness, so much discouragement, so much defeat, and we have to have a place where you and I can come and be encouraged to live life every day to the fullest and not lose heart. And that is why we are here this morning. If you look at our text, in our text, Paul tells us that he has found the secret to staying encouraged. Because in verse 16, Paul begins by saying, therefore, we do not lose heart. Paul knows that the secret to not losing heart is in this fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. He again says, therefore, we do not lose heart. 
And when you think about Paul making that statement, that is an amazing statement coming from Paul. Because it means that we're not going to faint. It means that we are not going to have a failing of our heart. When you look at what Paul's life was, what he went through, Paul is telling us that regardless of what came his way, regardless of what may come your way, you don't have to give up, you don't have to give in, and you don't have to give out. Brothers and sisters, you don't have to lose heart. It's so easy uh, to come to a place where you're ready to throw in the towel. Uh, you're ready to just lay down your burdens. And you're ready to just, just quit and give it all up. But when you study the life of Paul and look at all the things that Paul had gone through, it would have been easy for Paul not to to keep going, but to lose heart. But Paul discovered this spiritual gem that enabled him to stay encouraged in the midst of circumstances that would have discouraged any one of us. Paul's life, when you look at it, it was anything but easy. And consider this one passage in the same Second Corinthians but verse chapter 11, verses 24 through 29, look what Paul says, some of the things that he had to go through. Beginning in verse 24, Paul says, From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Paul said, they, 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 they strapped, me on, strapped me up, lashed me on my back 39 times, didn't give me the last one. Many people would not have made it to the 39th strike. He says, three times I was beaten with rods. Literally what Paul was saying here, they beat me up with a two by four. He says, once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked a night and a day. In journeys often in perils of waters, in, in perils of robbers, in, in perils of Gentiles, in perils in the cities, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among the false brethren. Paul went through a lot. He says in weariness and in toil, he says I was tired, I, I was working hard, uh, in sleeplessness often, I didn't get to sleep well, in hunger and thirst, in fastings, in cold and in nakedness. Paul went through a lot. And in verse 28, he says, besides the other things, what comes upon me daily? Paul didn't give us the complete list, but he did all this because he had deep concern for the church and for the people of God. Paul said, in spite of all those things that I have mentioned, the trials, the tribulations, the beatings, the stonings, the burdens, Paul is able to say, I never lost heart. And is there anybody out there this morning who can echo that statement? Is there anyone who can say, I have never been discouraged. I have never wanted to give up. Is there anybody who says, I'm always encouraged, I'm always excited, I'm always energized about my life and in my walk with the Lord, even in the trials and tribulations and the burdens that may come upon me. Can, can, can you say I'll take those discouraging moments over any victorious moment? And, and, and I think I know my answer, and my answer is no. I don't believe any one of us can say that because we all get discouraged at times. We all want to just quit and throw in the towel at times. We all just want to stop and quit giving because we feel that we have given all that we have given and there's no more left to give. Most of us 
probably want to be like David who said in Psalms, oh, that I had wings like a dove, then I would fly away and be at rest. And if we would be honest, we would all have to admit at times we would like to sprout a pair of wings and just fly away from here away from all the troubles and all the burdens and all the problems and all the trials and tribulations of life, we would just like to be off the grid and only have to worry about me, myself, and I. And while there are times when, when leaving troubles and afflictions uh, uh, seem like the best option, there's something that we should be far more interested in than releasing our burdens. We ought to be interested in reaching that point in our life that even in the midst of all these trials that may come, we can say just like Paul, I do not lose heart. Brothers and sisters, you and I, we are not alone in our struggles. We may have different varying degrees of struggles and trials and tribulations in our life, but, but we all virtually have the same struggle to deal with. Because Paul continues in the B part of verse 16 of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, and he says this, even though our outward man is perishing, Paul is saying that it is so easy for us to lose heart because there is this outer man that is perishing. It is perishing. That means it is rotting. This outer man is being ruined every day. This outer man is being corrupted every day. This outer man is being destroyed every single day. Day. The outer man, the outer me, is perishing every single day. And there are two main sources that contribute to the outer man perishing. The first one is the fallen nature of this man. The, the, the whole natural world is under the curse of God because of sin. And the world is under this curse of sin and there is futility, there is pain, there is suffering, there is corruption, and there is death. And 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7 reminds us that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That is, we all live out our days in these fragile, fleshly bodies similar to jars of clay. And one day the vessel will crack, it will break, and that vessel will not be able to be used anymore. And that is exactly what is happening to that outward man. He is perishing every day. He is becoming more corrupt every day. He is suffering every day, and he will get to the point where his outer perishing will take an effect on him. And it will eventually lead to him fading away in his death. And not only do we have this fallen nature that is causing our outward man to perish, there are our own fallen brothers that contribute to this as well. When you look up what causes us to lose heart, uh, sometimes it's other people. Because if the fallen nature doesn't get you, Fallen people sure will. Fallen people, they, they let you down. Fallen people, they will say things to hurt your feelings. Uh, fallen people, they will hurt you physically. They will abuse you verbally. They will abuse you emotionally and, and spiritually. And this will cause you sometimes to lose heart. Paul spoke about them in this same fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, if you go to verses 8 and 10, he says we are troubled on every side, 
That, that means these fallen people, they're, they're all around me. But he says, yet I will not be distressed. He says, we are perplexed by these fallen people. Uh, the shooter in uh, Indianapolis at the FedEx building, he was 19 years old. Most of the people in these mass shootings are, are, are up in age in their 40s and 50s, but now here we see this young man who, who has just become so overwhelmed. Possibly he lost his job and he went back and he took out his frustration on eight people and they lost their lives. Paul says he's perplexed, but he's not going to be in despair. He says these fallen Brethren persecuted him, but he was never forsaken. He was cast down, but not destroyed. He says, always bearing about in the body the dying of our Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. It is so easy to lose heart. When, when life turns against you, or when people are turning against you, or when you've, you've tried it this way and you've tried it that way, you've tried it every way, and things still don't work out, it's easy to lose heart. It's easy to come uh, to a place where you just want to quit. You just want to throw in the towel. Uh, but, brothers and sisters, this morning I'm here to tell you that you don't have to. You don't have to be defeated. Uh, you don't have to be one of those people who uh, used to walk with the Lord. Uh, you don't have to be one of those people who uh, used to go to church. You don't have to be one of those who uh, used to be faithful in their calling. Brothers and sisters, you can reach a place where despite all these things that may be happening in your life, you do not have to lose heart. You can reach a place where you can press on in spite of what is trying to press you down. You can echo that incredible statement of the Apostle Paul for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man is perishing, there is something else. That, that, that outward man is perishing. But Paul goes on to say, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. That's good news right there. In the midst of all the things that can drag us down and, and wear us down, Paul says there is some benefit to it because the inward man is being renewed day by day. What we need, what I need, and is to come to a place that Paul came to where we know our outward man is perishing, we know that the inward man is being renewed, and we faint not. We want to come to a place where even though I'm attacked uh, from without and from within by a fallen nature and by fallen men in this world, I do not lose heart. We want to come to a place where uh, uh, we don't lose heart regardless of what's going on around us or in us. We want to come to a place where we don't lose heart because there is something on the inside of us that is being renewed day by day that will enable us to deal with what's happening on the outside. We are given a fresh Breathing of energy from God day by day. This inner man is being renewed to help us and give us the strength to go on day by day. In the natural, that's what the, the outward man is. That is the natural man. His body, 
is deteriorating every day. His mind is being corrupted by what he sees happening in the world every day. It's being uh, 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 shaken and stirred by the things he's going through in his personal life, at home, with the family, on the job. Every day, the natural man's body and mind is being assaulted by the effects of sin and sinner. And every day that natural man has to endure those problems of living in this world with all the baggage that it has to offer. Brothers and sisters, when you look out at what's happening in this world today, uh, the things we see can easily discourage us. Because then they, the things that we hear can discourage us. Then we begin to feel discouraged and then we can begin to experience discouragement and all those things work together in combination to cause us to lose heart. That's the, the outward man is continually being bombarded and destroyed day in and day out. But while the outward man grows weaker and ever nearer to the grave every day, the inner man is renewed day by day. Every day there ought to be a sign around our neck that says renovation in progress. That's what we are every day when we close our eyes and wake up the next day, the renovation project starts all over. Every day the inner man is given a new strength to face the trials of that day. And I like the way Jesus put it in Matthew 6, 34. He says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. He's saying that you got so much stuff to deal with today that tomorrow should be off the radar. Just worry about what you have to get through today and then you'll tackle tomorrow on tomorrow. And while every day brings with us, with us its unique set of problems, its trials and its tribulations, every day also comes with its own measure of grace from the hands of the Father in heaven. I like Lamentations chapter 3, beginning at verse number 21. Uh, the prophet writes, this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope. He says there's something that I can think about, something that I can meditate on, something that I can pray on that gives me hope. And he gives us the answer. He says it, uh, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consume because his compassions fail not. Brother and sister, I rode by Paradise South on yesterday and I said to myself as I was riding, every time I pass a cemetery ought to be a shouting moment for me because God has allowed me to see another day because of his mercies, I was not consumed by coronavirus. Because of his mercies, I was not the victim of a crime. Because of his mercies, I get to see another day. The prophet says his mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He says he can't make it without the Lord, because he goes on and says, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. That's not the outward man saying that. That is that inward man that is being renewed day by day that is saying today, the Lord is my portion. And he says, since that is the case, therefore will I hope in him. He says, the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope 
and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. That there's no other we can turn to than to the Lord. Paul says that his grace is sufficient for thee. For my weakness, my strength is made perfect in weakness. When our burdens and our trials and our tribulations and the things that we see happening in this world uh, get us to the point where we become overwhelmed, Paul is saying, and the prophet is saying in Lamentations, let God be your portion. Because what he gives you every day will get you through for that day. The inner man is renewed every day by the grace of God. Every day that we wake up, uh, we can come to this fountain of grace and drink from it, and the inner man will be renewed, he will be renovated, he will be refreshed day by day, even though thou outer man is perishing and grows weaker and weaker by the day. It means there are some things that we have to do. It means we need to feed on the word of God every day. We can't drink of the living water if we don't read the living word. We need to pray to the Father uh, every single day. We need to fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ who may be going through the same things that you are going through and encourage one another. And don't make coming to the house of worship, don't make coming to join us virtually online a once a month thing, but make it a weekly habit. When you, when you look out, it, it makes you wonder, uh, how can so many lose heart? And you want to know why so many people can lose heart? Because they make no investment in the renewing of the inner man day by day. Uh, they focus too much attention on the things that are perishing, the things that are affecting the outer man. Uh, when we, when we uh, feed our bodies, uh, our bodies are perishing every day. But I would be uh, uh, wrong if I said none of us cared about feeding our bodies because we eat food every single day to keep our bodies fueled and functioning without fail. We maintain our bodies to keep them from perishing. Uh, we, we put gas in our cars. Uh, we make sure our oil is changed and we get our tune-ups when it's on time because our cars are also perishing. But we put the investment and the time in to make sure our cars are taken care of. Uh, we go to the doctor. Uh, we take our medicines. Uh, we exercise. And, and we take care of our bodies and do that because if we don't, they are going to perish. That is a good investment, but there is an even greater investment that we should make but yet we make no provisions for the inner man who must be renewed day by day. Brothers and sisters, these bodies won't last forever. Uh, our houses won't last forever. Our cars won't last forever. But there is the inward man, something on the inside of us, that was created to last forever. And if you're ever going to make and take care of an investment, take, make that investment your soul over anything else. Nothing that we have, nothing that we face in this world, in these earthen vessels, in this outward man was meant to last forever. But then I like the language that Paul uses in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.17. 
Even though you're going through what you're going through, even though the trials and tribulations may be tough, maybe you're still uh, scared about coronavirus and all the things we're seeing happen in the world, but Paul says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. There is Paul uh, uh, saying and calling our afflictions light and momentary. And, and I don't know about you, but not many of my afflictions seem that they are light. Uh, not many of the things that I have gone through or are still going through seem to be light. Even in your case, they may not seem light at the moment. And they may even seem like they have been uh, dragging on for quite some time. But Paul is saying that the pressure he is under is easy. But that's not how Paul, uh, when you read his story earlier, when I told you about all the things he went through, uh, Paul described his troubles. Uh, those things don't seem like they were light. Uh, being stoned and, and beat with a, a piece of wood or, or, or being lashed 39 times, five times. All those things don't seem light to me. But Paul tells us that his troubles may have been more than he can handle. Your troubles may be more than you can handle. Paul says he was pushed beyond his natural limits and you may be, might be so stretched out and stressed out right now that you're ready to crack like a clay pot. But Paul says now if you don't lose heart, your afflictions are light and only here for a moment. What Paul is saying is this, that the problems of life that seem heavy right now, uh, the trouble that seems as if they, it will never uh, go away, uh, the burdens that uh, we think will never end and that are about to break us, are really just weighty for the moment. Paul is saying that your troubles and your burdens won't last always. He goes on to tell us that the troubles he has, the things that he's going through, and he's telling you this morning the troubles that you have and the things that you are going through, when you compare them with the eternal weight of glory that we will experience when we arrive home in heaven, they are light and they are easy. In Romans 8, 18, Paul said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. When something is not worthy, you trash it, you throw it away, you burn it, you bury it. And Paul is saying the troubles and the problems and the trials that you're going through right now compare to nothing next to the glory that you will have that is going to be revealed in you. He's telling us, uh, don't be too concerned about what it looks like right now. Because what is in store for you in the future outweighs the troubles that you face right now. Nothing that we face is worthy to com be compared with the glory that we will experience, not only when we make it through what we're going through now, but also when we get to glory in heaven. But our problem is we hear what the word of God is saying. And we look at what we see and what we're experiencing. And then we doubt and don't believe it. Paul is saying it's all a matter of perspective. What do you have your eyes on? Do we have our eyes on the here and now? 
Or do we have our eyes on what Paul is telling us to focus our eyes on the then and the there? In verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 4, Paul reveals this secret for not losing heart. When life is trying to kill you, when, when problems are trying to overburden you, Paul uses the word temporal or temporary. He goes on in that verse and says, for the things which are seen are temporary. All that we see happening in the news, all that we see happening in the world, all that we see happening in front of our eyes are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The secret for not Losing heart is maintaining the proper perspective. It is asking the Lord to help you to get your eyes off of what you can see that buries you and burdens you down and gives you this feeling of hopelessness and discouragement and put your eyes on the things that you can't see that you know are there and are real because they are in glory awaiting your presence. That's how Moses made it. It says, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of Pharaoh. Pharaoh could have sent a hit squad out to get Moses, but Moses says, I am going to do the will of I am, the one I have only heard, but never seen. That's how Abraham made it. It says, by faith, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went. He went to a place that he did not see. That is how Stephen in the book of Acts chapter 7 saw God. It says, but he being full of the Holy Ghost looked up steadfastly into heaven while these men were stoning him. And one of those men there were Paul holding their coats. And Stephen, it says, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. But he did not see that before he was stoned. But his eyes were focused on the glory of God. And that's how our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made it. He was despised. He was rejected of men. He was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And being found in the fashion of a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of me and the transgressions of you and the transgressions of this whole entire world, the prophecy says he was stricken. And they made his grave among the wicked. But I go to the words of Paul again in Romans 8, 28, it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose, and because Christ answered the call and was called for this purpose, God raised him from the dead. That was his reward. And because of that, no matter what you and I go through, we can have a hope we can have a future, and we don't have to lose heart. Look, even Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, while in his human nature went through some of the same sufferings and afflictions and heartaches and rejections that you and I have to go to, people talked about him, people lied about him, 
people plotted against him. People tried to kill him. In the end, they thought they killed him, but in the end, they didn't kill him because he got up from the grave. The Bible says we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. He, he knows what you're going through. He knows what you're suffering. He knows it doesn't feel good to you right now. But if you are a child of God, nothing happens in your life is meaningless, including the pain and the suffering that we have to go through sometimes. Everything takes place is all a part of God's plan to develop you and to develop your faith. And, and I just want to throw this reminder in right here. God didn't save us uh, to make us happy all the time. God did not save us to, get, to bless you with blessings and blessings and blessings all the time in the way that we in our uh, human minds consider blessings. He, he didn't save us so that we could have a life living on easy street, never having a problem, never having a burden, never having anything to deal with. He saved us to make us more into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And part of that process comes with trials, comes with tribulations, it comes with heartaches, it comes with pain and suffering. And it has not only a purpose in the now, but it has a purpose in the eternal. So when those things come into your life, those things that you find yourself going through right now, uh, when it comes to cancer, uh, it's not meaningless. When, when it comes to heartache and, and your dreams are shattered, it's not meaningless. When, you, when your loved ones die, when it's not meaningless. When, you, when you're doing the work of the Lord and the people talk about you and they lie about you and they backbite you, it's not meaningless. Pastor Davis is, is, is overwhelmed, at, uh, he said last week, but everything that he is going through in his life has a purpose and it has a meaning. And when the tragedies of this life pile on you, one after another after another, and you are broken and, and you're weary and you're battered, it all serves a purpose to, to, to make you more into the image of Christ and to bring glory to the name of God. It's something that we should embrace, just like Paul said, and not lose heart. And when the war is over, brothers and sisters, the blessings from the Lord will come. And when we all get to heaven, the song says, what a day of rejoicing that will be because the ultimate goal is when we all see Jesus. We won't be thinking about the trials. Or we won't be thinking about the tribulations. We won't be thinking about the sicknesses that took over our bodies and the burdens that, and the struggles that we had in the outward man, but the inward man will be shouting and singing for victory. So, brothers and sisters, I want to encourage you today, whatever it is that you're going through in your life, no matter how hard it is, no matter how burdensome it is, no matter how overwhelming at times it may seem, don't lose heart. Brothers and sisters, I hope you've been encouraged by this message today, uh, and I pray that uh, God will continue to move on your lives and on your situations and bring you through whatever it is that you are going through in life today. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, I love you. Pastor Davis loves you. Uh, remember one another in prayer. Remember Brother Woodrow Thomas again. Uh, remember all of your brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember all those names that scrolled on the screen uh, and, and pick one and pray for that person uh, for the rest of this week. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you to say thank you today uh, for this message of encouragement. 
not discouragement, Father. Uh, there's so much going on in our world today, Father. Uh, we needed to hear a word from you today on not losing heart. Uh, despite what we see, uh, despite what we're going through, uh, despite uh, the, the things that uh, this world is allowing to happen, Lord, we know that you are able. And so, Father, we just want to say thank you once again. And now, Lord, I pray that your, your peace, your love, your protection and your blessings, your provisions follow us uh, from this day, hence now and forevermore. And it is in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You got a copy of it? Oh, just uh, uh, the invitation? Okay. Which one, the church? Uh, not, not right off the top of my head. All right. We don't ever want to uh, preach the word of God without giving someone an opportunity, even in a virtual setting, uh, to give them an opportunity to give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we extend the invitation uh, to anyone online that has received this word and it has touched your heart today, uh, that you would just pray this simple prayer with me, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner uh, and I am asking you to forgive me of my sins and, and receive me into you your kingdom, Lord. Receive me. I receive you into my heart and, and, and make myself a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, we just say thank you. If there was one who said that prayer, uh, we welcome you into the family of God uh, on today. Now, God bless you and keep you uh, is our prayer. Good morning, Bella Vista family and friends. Here are your announcements for the week. Would you like help and encouragement after the death of a loved one? The Grief Share is a special weekly seminar and support group to help you rebuild your life. Join us this Thursday, April 22nd at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. For more information, please contact Dr. Queen Martin at 281-924-1213. This is a reminder the audiovisual team will be having a second training on Thursday, April 22nd at 7 p.m. during choir rehearsal. This will be in preparation for the re-entry on May 16th. Don't forget to join us on Tuesday mornings at 7.14 a.m. for the Bella Vista prayer call. Grab your friends and join us in the Social Sanctuary for worship on Wednesdays. Services begin at 7 p.m. and are streamed via Facebook and YouTube. Don't forget to tune in weekly to the Care Academy Traditional Vanguard course posted weekly on the church website. If you have announcements to share, please be aware the deadline is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. You can email your announcement to announcements at bellavistanbc.org or kpriester at bellavistanbc.org. Stay safe, family. Wear your mask, wash your hands, and don't forget to social distance. And as always, everyone, have a great week.